presentation we will cover the time the static timing analysis uh, there is a there is a tool available with the development kit that it's called uh, the the SPU timing tool so it will give once you write your code you want to see how many stalls were there how many branch operations were taken uh, where were the delays where were the dependencies so this is a static timing a static analysis tool which will parse your code look at the assembly file and see uh, and basically try to give you an uh, anal ana analysis of uh, how the code is interleaved. So basically this is the, how the, the it is done. Take a simple uh, source code, example.c, produce the assembly file and then produce the annotated assembly source like it will in your current working directory when you run the command with the timing tool there will be a file .s .timing. If it is an example.c there will be an example dot, uh, s dot timing tool in the current working directory and this is the um, command options you can uh, this is how you say spu underscore timing um, and these are the options that you can give on the command line help will uh, display whatever the verbose uh, thing and then you can specify the architecture is uh, are you trying to profile uh, you know uh, basically you can uh, provide the target architecture with the minus m option and then you provide give the name if you don't want the default naming you can give a different kind of name on the command line and then it, you can count the number of cycles from the start of each instruction by giving this parameter my dash running dash count and then the input file. So now let us look at a source file and see uh, how to base how basically this tool is used in input vector uh, there is an input number n coming in float one float variable coming in there is an array of vector. Uh, there is an array of uh, vec underscore float and then there is another array y, x and y. So spu underscore splats take a value, takes an input value of a, of a scalar variable and then produces a vector variable. So what this vector element a will have, now alpha is what a float variable right. So this vector a, it is a vector, so there will be 4 floating point variables in that vector a. So SPU underscore splats will take the scalar value alpha may say it is uh, 4.5 right it will it will in, inside the vector a it will put 4.5, 4.5, 4.5 and then 4.5. So there will be 4 values of replicated across the whole vector and then you do a multiply add so basically multiply, multiply x i and y i and then you add it to a. So that this is what this uh, simple scalar code is doing. The, once the assembly code is produced, this is how a typical assembly file looks like, right? For any uh, source code, a simple C program. Now, this is the annotated source. Example dot s dot timing. That was the example dot c, and this is the annotated source code. Now let's look at the different features. How to basically uh, understand what this source code, uh, this timing file is saying. So the first thing thing, this thing to observe is the running count. Over here, there are basically the, uh, a few important columns, right? This is the first column to observe. This is the second column to observe. Again, we will go into further details of what these columns mean. And then there is a third column over here, which gives you the pipeline, an idea of how the instruction pipeline is looking like. And then the text portion and the data portions over here and the instructions and everything. Okay, so the running count, right? The cycle count for, uh, basically running count is a cycle count for each instruction. Well, every time an instruction starts, it's, it, it tells you how many cycles is, is that instruction taking. So in other words, if it is a shuffle B operation, it takes two cycles. So by adding up all these values, right, for, for our example, our loop is 17 cycles, right, because, um, so in other, it, it, this is where our loop is starting, right, so 23 and then 6, 23 to 6. So this is how you analyze how many cycles it takes and this is again a static analysis tool there is more tools available which make it a little more simpler, uh, give a little more simpler output. This is the execution pipeline. We always keep talking about dual issue, dual issue, dual issue, right? How do we make sure that there is actually dual issue happening? So in this one, every time there is a 0 or 1, the first column in this or the first sub column in the second column always tells you which pipeline it is going into. So if it is a 0, it is the even pipeline, right? If it is a 1, if it is if it's a 1 over here, it is the odd pipeline that this particular instruction uh, serially is using. 
dash D. There, if you notice, there is there are some D's are capital letters and there are some D's that are small letters. So the so the second sub column in the second column talks about uh, the basically the uh, dual issue bank, uh, status. Is it is a dual issue actually happening or is there a dependency? So if there is a small d, basically it is saying dual issue is possible but there is some dependency. So you, that instruction can be issued along with the even pipeline or the odd pipeline but there is some dependency that is stopping the uh, you know the uh, the uh, that's stopping the issue of dual instruction um, dual that will stop the dual issue at runtime and if it's a capital d it indicates that it, yes it will be dual issued so in other words it's a good thing when you see zero capital d and a one capital d that directly means that yes capital d dual issue is possible and it will happen and a zero and one means what it's a even and odd pipeline so Ideally, your second column should always look like 0D, 1D, 0D, 1D, things like that. That means your code is really efficient. Otherwise, you have to see, oh, there is some dependencies now and try to rearrange, restructure the code so the dependencies is, is removed. Now, let us look at the third column. This is the pipeline. Instruction clock cycle, which denotes the instruction clock cycle occupancy. So, there is different digits if you see. A digit 0 through 9 basically it will uh, it is for every instruction clock cycle there is a digit that will be displayed and if there is a if there is a dash you can always accept uh, basically that means there is a dependency the instruction is ready to be issued but it cannot be because there is some dependency with the previous instruction so there is a stall basically therefore if there is a steep sloping of these of this uh, uh, instructions digits that is actually very good because that means less dependency and it means efficient issue of instructions and shallow sloping usually you know I think even this is probably okay but it could be better I mean if it goes like that like the slope it is very good for your program if it is like this you know shallow is not good <clears throat> because it just denotes that there is more stalls. Now let us see the inner loop it, over here for example we are seeing that these two portions are showing a lot of dependency stalls right. So basically the load of y stalls one cycle for address increment if there is one dash. So therefore the resulting the store of the resulting y right stalls five cycles if there is five dashes waiting for the FMA operation this operation to complete I think they are looking at the over here. So for the FMA operation to complete there is five cycle stalls over here. So let us see what else. Now dependency stalls can be eliminated by unrolling the loop. However, let us keep one thing in mind. Even when we are unrolling a loop, make sure that not you are not using local variables that are not the same. For example, if there is a variable A that needs to be uh, computed in the first unrolling of the loop, use different variable names. Otherwise, if it is the same variable, the compiler gets confused and it thinks, oh, for the second version of unrolled loop, I need that variable, it is not needed but it does it introduces false dependencies. So even though you give the optimization O3 level to the XLC compiler, nothing might happen until you make sure that this false dependencies are not introduced in the code. Okay, profile markers, there is something called there is a header file profile.h which has instructions which read prof underscore cp and then there is a number, it could be 0 through 1 or uh, uh, pick any numbers that are consecutive. You can say prof underscore cp0 and then prof underscore cp1 and keep the loop in the middle. Let us look at an example before we talk any further. So for example, this is our loop, right? This is our vectorized code. So now we want to see what is the performance number. Now we do not want to basically capture all this overhead. We want to capture any time we want to profile code, it should only be in front of the computation, just before the computation main computation kernel starts and then before after it ends. So in this code we want when do we want to start profiling right before the loop and we want to stop profiling right after the loop. So if you see the for loop is starting right here we start prof underscore cp0 what it does is it starts capturing the cycle information. So it will start capturing the information 
and uh, for all the loop iterations and then it will print number of cycles it used up, number of stalls and it will produce every, all this information in the timing tool and the uh, statistics on the simulator. And in the assembly code you can carry, you can identify it because it introduces this instruction over here, the L no op instruction. Okay. Let us see there are some limitations. If you are writing your handwritten assembly code it may not work as well. This is a language that the compiler understands because it is trying, trying to do the disassembly of the code. It is trying to just generate the assembly so it understands its own effort. It is like someone else cannot understand your code, something like that. So if it is handwritten assembly running the timing tool on handwritten assembly may not produce the same results. It is always it the, the most beneficial use of it is when you are writing the source code in a high level language C, C++ whatever and then you are trying to uh, profile it via the uh, uh, producing you are running the timing tool on it because the compiler itself is generating the assembly file. So that is the timing, uh, static timing let us go over to the dynamic runtime analysis how do we do that. So the class objectives for this is to see how to do runtime dynamic analysis and how to produce that output on the simulator in a very user friendly understandable manner. All right. So when we do these profile checkpoints that we covered in the previous presentation this is how um, so this is how you can introduce profile checkpoints prof underscore clear prof underscore start and prof underscore stop. Now when you do that it will produce an output of number of cycles consume, consumed and the here is the your loop part this, this is something that you will introduce in your code. This is the output that it will generate on the simulator. It will say the, uh, depending upon the number of the uh, number of the SPU used it will print the SPU number over here and then it will say CP31 that is a checkpoint and then it will tell you the instruction counter total number of instructions including the no op and the outer braces and then the in the braces excluding no ops and then the total number of cycles used. So for these many instructions the total number of cycles used were these many and in order to run the extract that kind of information we need to tell the simulator that you cannot just run in fast mode we have to change the mode of the simulator to say pipeline mode. So in other words when you put the pi simulator in the pipeline mode it will just record every single cycle. These are the instruction classes all the instructions that we are dealing with arithmetic memory all these instructions fall under certain categories. And that category is defined uh, uh, and the even and odd pipeline is based on that category. <coughs> so all single precision floating point operations are called FP6 and they are always in the even pipeline right. All the branch instructions because it is a kind of it deals with memory. So we will be falling under BR class and it will go to the odd pipeline. The no op loads and stores branch and store, store, store branch hence all fall under this category LS and L no op and then there is uh, the loads and stores can be uh, they take 6 cycles every load and store and then uh, they go to the odd pipeline and the, all this information is important is necessary when you are basically writing your simple application in because if you are trying to do an add right you will know that it will definitely go to the even pipeline because it is an arithmetic operation. So after that if there is an if else statement you want to uh, structure your code so that if there is a branch taken make sure that it is right after the uh, computation or right before it. So the compiler can automatically restructure the code and issue it in the two pipelines so it is it's concurrent. The point of you making it uh, forcing the dual issue or make writing the code so that the dual issue happens is so that you save the cycles right. It is all about the cycles we are going to reduce the cycles at any cost bottom line. Okay. So there is a, the simulator provides these uh, statistics you can pay basically type on your, uh, on your uh, command prompt like the, this particular command and it will print some data we will see that in the hands on session. If you want to use the GUI stat, uh, controls so for in other words you run your application yesterday you run hello underscore be right you run your hello underscore be and then you go over to the to your SPU and you do this command SPU stats and it will print it print this whole window provided the simulator is set in the pipeline mode. Now the simulator output will be looking like this. So the first give the first section gives you the complete summary it tells you um, the total number of cycle count the instruction count and CPI so number of cycles per instruction in the code. So it is a very useful thing because a lot of times actually ever ever before I joined cell programming the most I used to think about is how to write object oriented code and uh, how to make sure that it is uh, the coding standards are good and 
and but I never really worried about performance after uh, until I started working on the on the on the cell programming. And then there's a few things that I realized I could just do real neat, and I could apply it back if I went back to my previous uh, position. But it's really neat to see write the code and see exactly that. Oh God, I suck at this. It's terrible. And then you go back and you improve your code and you restructure, do things that just make it so much more efficient. So it gives, in other words, if your cycle count is way too much and you know that it's a small code, obviously there's something wrong going on. And it's not visible to the naked eye, but you know, you can have, you have all these tools to run on the code to, to get, to basically observe the behavior and improve it. Okay, so this is the full summary of the output, right? Now let's go deeper down. The first section gives the total number of cycles and the instructions, complete instructions executed by a program. And then um, the cycle count. Usually it should be somewhere less than one. It's really good if it's less than one. If it, and uh, usually it should be between one and two, because otherwise there's something not right if there's more than two or three or four. So total number of cycle count is here. Instruction count is here, CPI is here. And then the, let's say the performance cycle count. Basically the performance cycle count is basically when you started profiling the code, right? Before, uh, the, the total cycle count is all the instructions for the entire code. Performance cycle count is for the parts that you're trying to profile and optimize the, the cur that particular kernel. And then you can also get performance no op count and you can also get performance instruction count. You can also get branch and hint, stat uh, hint uh, statistics. So you, all, you, can, you have all these, the total number of branch instructions is 14,000 something something over here, right? 143,000. So you have taken, actually you have taken these many branches. No wonder the cycle count over here is so high, 8.55. Branch is not taken is 280. So you can get all these statistics that, that determine the nature of your code. And if you have any used any hints, in your code, it will give you a summary of how many hints actually worked. There's also this efficiency statistics, single cycle, you know, number of dual cycles, how many instructions did uh, use the dual issue uh, pipelines. <clears throat> There's also no op cycles. That it's a really neat summary of everything that you can possibly know about your code. Prefetch miss, dependency stalls, if there's any dependency stalls, it will give you a complete list of how many dependency stalls were there. So in other words, the point to notice over here is dual issue cycles. So the point to observe here is basically to see how many dual issue cycles were there, how many prefetch miss stalls were there. The most important thing, the dependency stalls. Reduce dependency, reduce dependency, reduce dependency in the code. That's the key because otherwise no matter how good the code is, you're trying to vectorize it if there's dependencies, it cannot be parallelized. The compiler has got immense capability to parallelize your application, but if it's not well written, even the compiler cannot do anything unless it's you want to write your, or your own assembly code. All right, what else? Hint target stall, pipe hazard stall, all this information, it's a, uh, and this can be very useful presentation for you to refer back to when you're right going, uh, you know, when you go back from this class and you write your own application code, and you know, refer to these, uh, you know, these features available and see what they mean and how to use them. Okay, and then there's another command line option available which says on the command simulator prompt, once it's the simulator is running, you know that window which gave all this garbage, all this addresses and this, all this trace output was coming over there. You can go to that window and hit control C, it'll give you the command prompt. Or on your GUI, GUI window, you say stop. So it will halt the processor. And then you type this command, mysim my sim SPUN display statistics. So it will hint, it will print a complete, uh, you know, uh, complete uh, recap of the number of hints, the number of branch instructions that were not taken, you know, the number of branch instructions that were taken, the number of hints, the number of hits. So this is actually very good. There were so many uh, hits uh, for the uh, hint instructions or branch hits. And there's another option that's available where you can provide the parameter hint. So SPU N will be, you can see by when you hit control C, you can see what SPU was used. It was 0 or A, 7 or 4. So you provide this, that as a parameter and you enter this command and you can get all the hint status data. 
And then you can see if you're really uh, you know, low level person, then you can see what is the usage of registers. The register reads, the register writes, and it gives a very good idea that if and once you write your application, how many register reads and writes were, were done. And then there's an option on the simulator which, says, which prints the event log. In other words, when you pr try to print the event log, it will show you the summary over here in this little neat box. It will give you the number of cycles per instruction counts, right? DMA operations counts, how many gets were there, how many puts were there, how many translation faults were there on the PPE side. There's no address, address translation, remember, on the SPU. So, so, so that can only be for the PPU. Uh, how many fetch groups were issued, issue groups. This is a control panel where there's a, you know, uh, more data gets printed. And this is just a general execution. And then there's a visual uh, visualizer summary display where you can get the number of DMA gets and puts, cycle instruction count, the channels, uh, stalls, everything. And again, there, if you see, there's like all these eight windows for eight different SPUs. And when you do a pipe trace, this is how the output looks like. There is some more information available. Uh, you have the materials on your CD, but do try to go ahead and check this link out. It's on developer works. Uh, there's a really neat paper written about how performance is extracted on the cell system simulator, some processes that, that, that are used. And it's a very user-friendly, it's a small paper that you can, that's very good beneficial information.